first mineral Captain Solano ever discovered. Always was the nostalgic type. Jara Rydeck. <laughs> Last time I saw you, it was graduation from the Academy. You'd already secured one of the most prestigious assignments possible. And you were burning with enough ambition to fuel seven trips around the Necrid Expanse. It's good to see you again, Captain. I could not be happier to have you on the Resolute. The only regret is that we couldn't provide you with a warmer welcome. The arrival of a first officer to her new ship deserves a bit of fanfare. But, unfortunately, we've had our hands full with the refit. That would be totally unnecessary. I don't need any pomp and circumstance. You've been here all of five minutes, and already you're trying to make us more efficient. I like it. As I'm sure you've heard, we've had a rough go of it these last six months. The ship suffered some damage, but not nearly as much as the crew. You'll have to forgive me. I don't really know the details. Starfleet has been kind enough to keep the story contained. Probably because they want to protect me. But I don't mind telling you. We were on the verge of a major scientific breakthrough. A quantum leap forward in warp core technology. 10,000 teradynes per second. The ability to travel at a sustained rate of speed longer and faster than we ever dreamed. What would have been the crowning achievement of my career? Right there. Within our grasp. <sighs> Till it all went so horribly wrong. We pushed her too hard and a warp core malfunction overloaded the system. Creating a pressure gradient way beyond what the ship can handle. It was heartbreaking. We lost some of our best people. As captain, I have to take full responsibility. It was my decision to make, and I have to live with the consequences. We all know the risks when we sign up. There are no guarantees, as much as we tell ourselves otherwise. True, but as captain, my job is to mitigate and manage the risks as much as possible. And that's where I failed. In my defense, I will say, I might have avoided the whole ordeal if my senior staff had been willing to trust me. There was a lot of pushback from my former XO. I think that cost me his confidence. I don't want you to pony punches. Certainly not on my account. But once we decide on the course of action, I need everyone to fully commit to the mission. Anything short of that just won't work. And that's when things start to go sideways. Whether I agree or disagree, I can promise that I'll be honest to a fault. Good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. But at the end of the day, it has to be my call. Look, I'll be blunt. We can't afford another mistake. Or at least, I can't. I feel like my career is hanging in the balance here. We need a win. Something to restore the crew's confidence. I understand. On a more positive note, Starfleet has tasked us with what they're calling a mission of the highest priority. Escorting a senior diplomat to Hotari space. Two previously peaceful and otherwise non-aggressive civilizations now find themselves on the brink of all-out war. So it's a peacekeeping mission? I see it as a golden opportunity to not only prove what the Resolute and her crew are truly capable of, but also a mission for which we're uniquely qualified. This ionic storm. Our long-range sensors suggested several orders of magnitude stronger than anything on record total anomaly like nothing we've seen before. And you'll never guess where it leads. Atari. Exactly. Very nearly in the precise location where we're headed. Where I imagined the interference will be exponentially greater. But the diplomat will brief us on the details of the rendezvous. Who is the senior diplomat we're escorting? That I don't know. Starfleet hasn't said. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. 
I expect we'll have some rough sledding when we arrive, so I need you to prepare the crew for the worst. There's just one more thing I want to clarify up front. The metric that, for me, will be the ultimate measure of your success. What is it? If, after serving as my first officer, you don't one day find yourself with a ship of your own, then I will consider it my personal failure. When that might happen is entirely up to you. But it goes without saying, you have my full support. It's been a dream of mine since before I can remember. So I would be honored to become a captain someday. As long as you're willing to do the work, you have my promise. I'll do everything in my power to see that it happens. Thank you. Come. Let me introduce you to the crew. you've already met Commander Ermont. Please, do everything you can to make Commander Rydeck feel at home here. I'll be on the Starbase. I have an urgent meeting with the Starbase commander to get our authorization to get underway. If they drag your feet any longer, we won't make our rendezvous. The bridge is yours. needs to lower the structural integrity field. He sent a crew out to recalibrate the emitters in response to the danger posed by the storm. We just need your go-ahead. Mission granted. Lowering structural integrity field now. Entering maintenance mode. Condition blue. Turn off the SIF. Great. Let's get to that emitter. Every time we're out here, I half expect to see her in pieces again. She's still got some scars on her. It has character. When I joined Starfleet, all I wanted was a ride out of town. 
but this isn't exactly how I pictured it. On the outside of the ship? <laughs> no. Sometimes it feels like we're just part of the machinery. Don't you want more than that? I mean, Starfleet is noble and all, but it's still a machine. A massive, massive machine. I am more than that. And so are you. You wanted to get away. I enlisted because I didn't want to wait years just to get out and see the galaxy. I wanted to go somewhere, see new worlds, look up at a sky no one's ever seen before. Just because I'm cranking a hyperspanner up in a Jeffrey's tube today doesn't mean that's all I'll ever be. Diaz to Commander Chovak. We are at the SIF emitter. Acknowledged. You may proceed with the recalibration. Recalibration. Careful. Too much action and harmonics will deflect the alignment. Commander Westbrook, right? Chief Science Officer. You remembered my name and my rank. Impressive. Yes, I'm the Chief Science Officer, and I have the dubious honor of being the most senior officer on this bridge. At least I know this ship inside and out. Better than just about anyone. What a very impressive list of credentials. This is a research and discovery ship, first and foremost. Now with a former tactical officer as its new first officer. I'm curious though, a Kogliad, or half in your case, is an odd choice for first officer, given your vulnerable condition and all. But if, as an example, we found ourselves in a hostile situation and you were suddenly incapacitated because you needed an infusion, what would happen then? leave Captain Solano without an XO. Granted, that would be a worst-case scenario, but not outside the realm of possibility. That's very kind of you to be concerned about my well-being, but you don't need to trouble yourself on my account. I'll be fine. Well, I wouldn't say I was concerned, just curious, that's all. Listen. Can I be blunt, Commander? I see no reason to stop now. Commander Sutherland, your predecessor, was one of the best first officers in all of Starfleet. His record was impeccable and his reputation was without equal. I mean no disrespect, but the shoes you're stepping into are almost impossible to fill. He was loved by the crew. And he was one of my closest friends. So I can only hope that you'll live up to expectations. I don't think I could ever replace Commander Sutherland. And it would be a mistake to even try. Seeing as Captain Solano is on the Starbase, let me give you an update on this ion storm we're flying into. It's unusual, unlike anything I've ever seen. At the moment, I can't tell you if the Resolute will shrug it off or if we're putting ourselves at risk. 
However, if we learn more about its patterns, its nature, we can come up with a scientific countermeasure. Just a moment. We've got a massive energy wave inbound on screen. Tracing its trajectory. Starbase docking clamps are holding. The storm's emissions are fluctuating, coming in waves. And if my projections are right, we're about to get hit by a wide band burst of ionic energy, like a tsunami. I'm reading power abnormalities all over the ship. Estimated time to impact. Two minutes. Red alert. Bye. Putting sensor visualization on screen. With the structural integrity field shut down, we can't take a direct hit. Time to impact. One minute. Shield systems are severely impacted. We have limited protection. I need every available solution. What are our options? We can weaken the impact of the storm with a deflector pulse. There's a better way. I'm sending all auxiliary power to the deflector dish. Send the aux power to the shields. We can't reactivate the entire shield bubble, but it's a directional threat. So we can orient all we have towards the wave. You have to believe me. We only get one shot at this. We can't afford to get it wrong. That's right, which is why we need to send power to our shields. Petrosium, get those shields up. Rerouting power to shields. Stand by. I need a headache. We've only got one shot. Understood. On my command. Raise shields! This is it! All hands, brace for impact! supercharge the plasma, forcing it to backflush through the system and creating a dangerous imbalance. And you can blow out every primary system on the ship. Just tell us where you need us. I need you to traverse the hull to the access port to recalibrate the port nacelle plasma regulator. We've reached the first access point. Understood. Do you see the override for the level one fail-safe circuits? Affirmative. Engage the override. It should allow us to stop the EPS flow to the warp engine without triggering an automatic core shutdown. some crosstalk in the bypass circuit. We need to route the signals so they don't interfere with each other. Dears to Resolute, the failsafes are temporarily disabled. Moving on to the EPS regulator. Yeah. There's no 
took most of it. It snuck up on me. That damaged the suit. Energy density is down to 60%. Carter! That hurt. Do not get hit again. Adjusters reset to neutral. EPS lines to the core warp engine are back in balance. Almost done. Once I cycle the manifold nozzles, Chobaka. Sir, it's a more complex situation than when you Jara, disembarked. I need you to do the right thing. We can't have this go sideways before we even leave for the mission. The captain made himself quite clear. They're gonna get hammered with debris out there. Reverse the polarity. There is protocol. And there are lives. What is the holdup? Starbase, stand. We're gonna flip hull polarity to disengage the clamps. Yes, Commander. Repair crew, this is Acting Captain Jara Rydek. Be advised, we are going to reverse whole polarity to free us from the remaining docking clamp. Tether yourself and deactivate your boots on my mark. Understood. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, 
two, one. Mark. System failure. I got it. I'm gonna have to tow her back to the airlock. Mr. Diaz, the situation has changed, and you are at risk of triggering a substantial electromagnetic arc to approach the main hull the way you came. But Commander, the way we came is the nearest airlock. There is an auxiliary auxiliary hatch near you on the far end of the pylon. You must bring Miss Edsilar there to access the interior. Roger that. I'm at the auxiliary hatch. Here, let me help you. Medical, we've got one wounded at my location. Millie. Oh, man. See you at sick bay.
Status report. The repair crew made it inside. EPS flow is back to nominal levels. The SIF is back up. How does this affect mission readiness, Mr. Ermat? Releasing the docking clamps using hull polarity minimized damage to the Resolute. We'll have some last-minute repairs to make, but if we reapportion some of the staff, we can make our departure on time. As of now, however, we are successfully moored to the station. Good to hear. Send updates to my ready room. Commander Rydek, with me. You disobeyed my orders. Well? I'm sorry for that, Captain. I you did what disobeyed I thought was... my orders! And not just in front of the bridge crew, but the Starbase staff as well. That's going to get around. My name's already tarnished around the fleet. But what is it going to do to my credibility on this ship? From the top to the bottom. Bridge to lower decks. Captain, I told you I'd be honest, so here it is. Maybe I shouldn't have disobeyed a direct order, but you were wrong. You weren't on board, and you didn't have all the information, so I made the right decision for the ship. If you're worried about your credibility, put your ego aside and trust your crew. Trust me. You might have won some fans on the bridge with that stunt, but not everyone. Lieutenant Commander Chobok has already bent my ear. I'm sure he doesn't take it personally. He'll get over it in time. Mr. Chobok is more complicated than he would want to admit. I guess we all are. And, if I'm being honest, I'm not sure what I would have done in the moment either. You never really know if you weren't in those shoes. So, let's just boil it down to you did what you had to. That'll have to be good enough for me. Thank you for understanding, sir. I'm sure no one knows the burden of command as well as you do. I'm sure you will, someday. Despite it all, we got our final Starfleet clearance to depart. So if you'll fetch Mr. Ermac, we'll knock out the final details of any outstanding repairs, and we'll set out for Hatar. Yes, sir. All departments reporting full mission readiness. We've got our full complement on board. This is my favorite moment, right now. The start of a new mission is always full of possibility. The Orion Syndicate could sell us a drug. <laughs> Don't let the Admiral to hear you say that. Captain on the bridge. Sit. Sit, everyone. You all know, I'm not big on speeches. We're embarking on the first mission since our refit. Let's make it a good one. Disengage docking clamps. Docking clamps released. Thrusters ahead, Mr. Hendar.
to do it. Set a course for the Hotari system. Prepare to go to war, mate. Aye, Captain. You know what? You take this. I know that. 